We're fortunate to have a wonderful musical scene here in Great Falls. Coming up on this episode of We're No Damn Experts, we're talking with Songbird and Great Falls champion Michelle Chenoweth about auditioning for and making the Great Falls Symphonic Choir. She gives us some previews into their upcoming performance with the Great Falls Symphony. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shannon Newth. And, and we're, we're No, no damn, damn Experts. Experts. Every time I start, I want to say, I'm your host. And that's oh. not the right way to say that, because I'm not the host. I'm a host. Well, you could say, we're your hosts. I'm yeah. Rebecca. I'm Shannon. I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, today on the, <laughs> Shannon, you may not know, but today on, t- on today's podcast. Oh, how'd she get here? I don't know. <laughs> We have with us in the studio uh, an amazing, amazing woman Yes, who is a phenomenal yoga instructor. Let mm. me just start with that. Yes. Um, she is very supportive when you're, when you believe you are not doing yoga well. Have you she, taken a class from it her? Is, <laughs> I laughed through an entire session of yoga with, mm. with this, with our guest. And um, she continually said, you're doing great. I'm like, there's no possible way I'm doing great. <laughs> She was there going, nope, it's not the worst I've seen. I'm like, can't possibly be <laughs> true. Um, in addition to that, community servant um, mm-hmm. has mm-hmm. sat on boards and um, helped grow and develop downtown Great Falls, which mm-hmm. is a huge thing. And stands by her husband's side at trade shows, which <laughs> I have a spouse that a does that. And I'm like, that's, that there's an award category yeah. <laughs> for that person. Yes. So <laughs> Good job. with that, let me introduce to you listeners, the first time podcast guest ever, but hopefully she won't be a stranger, Michelle Chenoweth. Thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> My goodness, I'm blushing. <laughs> and I am... Uh, Heading straight over to the home show. Yeah, I figured as right much after we wrap up here. That's so. where you're going to be. I'm all fancy. Where you're living the, all weekend. Fancy for the home show later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. We finished what is setting he? up last night at about eight o'clock. Okay. So. Yeah. What does what does he do again? Where? So he, my husband. Where are you standing? <laughs> yeah, my husband sells Hotsy pressure washers, which okay. is a brand of industrial cleaning equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, Hotsy's a very well known brand in North America. Um, they've been around for 50 plus years now and okay. my husband's family has owned this company for 49, I believe. Oh my gosh. We're at 49 years. Wow. Um, he's, he took over about a year out of high school. Holy and cow. Wow. We've been invested in this for a yeah. while. It's actually what brought us to Great Falls. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Okay. From 23 where? 23 years ago. <gasps> wow. I know. From That's Billy's. not that long Billy's ago. Good. That's no, not that long. Not in the scheme of things. It's not. Yeah. It's a blink. Happens quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. She is also the mother to the ginger ninja. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's the he doing? Ninja. He's doing great. He's finishing up his freshman year at Great Falls College, MSU, oh, nice. and just thriving there. It's been a really wonderful community. Um, and we've really enjoyed having him home this yeah. year. I wasn't ready to let go just yet. Yeah. So it's been nice. I, um, I don't know the back the backstory to that. <laughs> the I don't know if ninja. there's <laughs> much of a backstory. That's just his nickname. <laughs> Honestly, I can't really remember <laughs> at just, what point in life that okay. nickname originated. That's just either who he is. he's just my okay. little ginger baby, okay. and um, <laughs> then he became the ginger ninja. The more he got I into like athletics yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's uh well, he used to work down at Mighty Mo Brewing Company. Mm. And um, I saw him down there. Just great kid. Um, yeah, it's always fun when you find <laughs> find kids like in those kind of settings, and you're like, "Oh, your parents did a good job." <laughs> I know who they you're are. You're a too. decent human. <laughs> He's a good egg. He's a good egg. But um, we've lured you here under the auspice of something <laughs> that 
I was surprised um, and shocked. Not that we're <laughs> like spend every moment of our day together. We're not that close of people, but I had no clue you could sing. Not really? one at mm. all. And that's my fault. But you <laughs> tried out and became a member of the Great Falls Symphonic Choir. Yes. Yeah. What led to the decision to jump into that pool? Boy, this is a story. <laughs> well, oh, good. This hey, is your place for it. Have yeah. your coffee. And get a refill. <laughs> get yourself comfortable. Here's right. the deal. <laughs> Sit back, relax. Her next stop is a train show, so she's yeah. going to go extra long. <laughs> yeah, she's like, as long as I can stretch this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Yeah. You know, the podcast yeah. went really, they really long. They needed me for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I have been a singer my whole life. I love to sing. I come from a musical family. I grew up um, just being a songbird. I have just always loved to sing. I remember spending the night at my grandmother's house and listening to her warble around the house. And she was always using her opera voice, which we thought was oh so hilarious as children. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, when grandma does her <laughs> opera voice, everybody loses it. And then I got to the point in my life where I started catching myself doing the same thing. I'm like, oh, this is so wonderful. Oh. I love it. But I... Um, through my middle school and high school years was really devoted to choir and my uncle was actually my choral director oh and he is a phenomenal musician from trumpet to piano to vocal wow. he's just a wealth of musical knowledge and talent and um, it was really cool for me to get to be in his class did the other kids know he was your uncle? Yeah, he uh, did. Oh, okay. He never gave me any special treatment. Not oh, at all. Man. Which hurt my feelings <laughs> yeah. a lot. Because I felt like I deserved <laughs> that. Right. Like, I earned that. Hey. <laughs> you don't know what I put up with living in this family. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have some special treatment. Well, I went, to, I went to school with a cousin with one of... I had a cousin that I went to school with. I don't know. That just didn't sound right when it first came out. <laughs> and I grew up in a small town and no one knew he was my cousin. And when, so weird. when I would tell people... Like, we would hang out at recess, and this girl that liked him started getting mad. Like, why are you hanging out with him? I like him. He's my boyfriend. I'm like, he's my and cousin. Like, I'm not trying to get up. You can have <laughs> and, him. Yeah. And she looks at me, and she goes, he's not your cousin. I'm like, 100%, he's my cousin. Like, right. Why would I be making that up? Seems like an odd thing to say. Right. Especially if you think I'm trying to go Inter after him. Why would I say he's my cousin? So... <laughs> So glad people knew he was your uncle. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So <laughs> in my, let's see, sophomore sophomore year of high school, my family left Illinois, which is mm. where I had been in uh, Uncle Jeff's choir class, <laughs> and moved to Montana. And we moved to Shepherd, Montana. Oh, wow. Ooh. And I went from a very large school with a <laughs> lot of musical offerings to this Small little school. country school with... A small choir and <laughs> yeah. no fun like concerts or productions or big like showtime was a big thing mm -hmm. when I grew up and everyone that sang couldn't wait to be old enough to try out. And I never got that opportunity <laughs> oh, because it ripped away from you <laughs> right before yeah. the year that I would have been able to audition. So I never got my chance to shine in showtime. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got to watch all my cousins do it over the years, which was just like a real heartbreak. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> I wasn't jealous at yeah. all. No, nope, clearly. <laughs> Love them so Love much them and so the much. opportunity they all got. All of their talent. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but after high school, you know, they're just, there's just not a lot of opportunity beyond those organized um, opportunities to just get in a choir and sing. Mm -hmm. um, I did a church choir for a little while and then we moved to Great Falls and that was kind of it. I'd, yeah. I'd had a few people mention something about the community choir and I never, you know, I was having raising babies at that mm -hmm. time and busy working. Um, it just didn't happen. And then a couple of years ago, I got the, uh, the dreaded COVID mm. and boy, did it do a number on me. Mm. It's, uh, I've been struggling with the long COVID for a couple of years now and how it's affected me neurologically. Um, I actually took that prompt from an email to audition for the symphony to help my brain recover mm. from the neurological oh. effects of long COVID. Wow. I was really struggling with memory 
and just basic like cognition, like processing thoughts and getting through the end of a sentence mm. without forgetting what I was talking about. Um, and I wanted an opportunity or a different way to work on my lung capacity mm. without being in the gym and pushing myself to that point where I felt like I was going to pass out Yeah, because I was having issues with that, like cardiovascular issues. And so this seemed like the perfect answer to that mm. problem. Um, other than the fact that I hadn't sang in a choir or read <laughs> a piece of sheet music and pushing 25 plus years. So Ooh. that was a little intimidating. It was extremely intimidating. I'm not going to lie. I was so <laughs> nervous at that audition. That, yeah. I was ill. Um, I was very nervous to go try out. But Cynthia Stevens, Cindy Stevens is our is our director. And I went over to Great Falls College and auditioned. And I felt like it was a mess. It was a... <laughs> It was special. <laughs> my like you finished reading, and you walked away and you're like, like wow. Well, my sight no, reading was, was not quality. <laughs> oh but I got through it. Um, and my my jazzy rendition of <laughs> Happy Birthday at the end, I think is what sealed the deal for me. <laughs> that is fantastic. But I'll have to clarify that maybe someday oh, with Cindy. Yeah. Um, so here we are. Yeah, I she welcomed me into the symphony and I just was flabbergasted. So when Maybe. you got the call and Cindy says you made it, you're like, uh, are, you, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no, she like, told me I right was there, there on the spot. <laughs> oh, she, wow. She took me right there. So wow, oh. I got to do all that face to face and... It was still kind of a shocking moment, to be really honest. I was like, oh my gosh, really? Okay, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you get on, how, how often do you practice? Now, we had Dusty Molyneux in the studio a little bit ago. He was mm -hmm. talking about the community, uh, Great Falls. Municipal band. There we go. Mm -hmm. They practice the night before, and then they and then do they the performance on Wednesday. They are so professional. It's <laughs> ridiculous yeah. so i'm yeah. like oh i thought you guys practice like, like every night you know, yeah like, during very, the week very... and they're like he goes no yeah. and i'm like oh my goodness wow. so talented what, musicians i'm guessing you guys practice not because for lack of professionalism but just i'm guessing you practice more than the night before i actually did bring <laughs> oh, wow. my rehearsal oh, schedule look at that. Oh. Uh, we practice every monday night so oh. um for this particular um series i guess we'll call it so we had a concert back in December was our last concert that we performed with the symphony. And we started practicing for that in early October, mm -hmm. late, late September, early October. So for this April 29th um, upcoming concert that we will be performing with the symphony, we began January 23rd. Oh, wow. Oh, so wow. we practice every Monday night for two hours. And then when we get down to crunch time, the week of... Those are some long rehearsals yeah. where we are in the man's field with the symphony and kind of chopping it out. So that gets, to me, it's just a thrill when we get to actually be in rehearsal with the symphony. I just some chills and goosebumps. Uh, I'm such a geek when it comes <laughs> to music, though. Like, I, I'm a choir geek. I'm a band geek. I'm just all the all the music. I love it all, and I just feel. Like, this is such a dream come true mm -hmm. for me. And I'm still really polishing. Like, there's a lot that I'm trying to dig out of the archives when it comes <laughs> to, like, my musical knowledge. We are working on some challenging music that um, it's pushing me, which is mm -hmm. great. That's what I I came here for that. You know, I, I wanted that challenge for my brain. And I wanted to remember what it felt like to make music like that. Yeah. To sing in a way that... Um, it's just not like what you hear on the radio. No. <laughs> You're real singing. Yeah. <laughs> and then to touch on something else you said, um, Dusty Molyneux being the musical director for our community, um, Small World, I actually had him as my band director at Shepherd High School. Really? That's right. Years. He Gosh. mentioned he taught mm -hmm. there. Yep. So wow. he was my, my band director, gave me some private trumpet lessons back mm. in the day and huh. um, took me through... Um, some music festivals that I did very, very well in. And uh, he's a phenomenal teacher. Mm. We're lucky to have him here in Great Falls. Could you pull out a trumpet and do a set of scales? I could probably do a couple. Oh. Before my <laughs> lips just turned into yeah. mush. <laughs> so I played the flute. 
Um, and I, like I said, grew up in a small town. Uh, nobody knew who my cousin was, which was weird. <laughs> but everybody was involved with choir and band. We had a very strong music program at our school, a very strong music teacher, Miss Murdoch. Shout out if you listen. <laughs> um, but I haven't touched that flute since I graduated from high school. I don't know if I could play a scale. I don't know if I could have any memory of even how to play the notes. I actually pulled out a book the first time I attempted to get my trumpet out again after high school, which was a solid 15 years Mm -hmm. easily. I mean, I had my Keegan was old enough to be there watching me um, because it was around the time that he was considering what musical instrument that he wanted to play in school is that is and keegan the ginger ninja he's yeah. the okay. ginger yeah. ninja. Keegan is my ginger ninja. <laughs> and he um carried on the tradition and played my trumpet oh cool That's until cool. he was a freshman and then he got a little too busy with sports to want to be involved with mm. with a band anymore but it was mm. fun to watch anyway yeah so trumpet player did you have you decided have you done it are you gonna try out for the symphony because they allow people to try out for the symphony, too. I mean, I'd be sitting next chair to Dol- Dusty Mullen, though, and he's <laughs> way, way better than me, so I better practice a bit But that would I be cool, that. full circle. Wouldn't yeah. it? Sit next to him in the symphony. He did yeah. encourage me several years ago. I bumped into him somewhere, and I said, gosh, I just I miss playing. I miss being in, in music. And mm-hmm. he's like, come try out for the community band. And Yeah. Like oh my gosh, I haven't touched that thing since since the last time yeah. you saw me. <laughs> but cool. you know, it, who knows? It may happen. Yeah, it I'm excited happen. to have you back on the podcast when you make when the you community, make the municipal when I'm, band. When I'm also yeah, out there tooting it up with my horn. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what part are you uh, vocal section are you in? in I the am choir? an alto too now. Okay. Um, well, I my range can probably go up to soprano too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in the lower part right now in the choir, and it's it seems to be a good fit for me um, and a good space where we we need bodies. So mm-hmm. huh. um, we've got plenty of talented, strong upper voices, and so um, it doesn't hurt my feelings that I've lost that upper register. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's lack, a tough lack of lower. Practice, so you you got to work yeah. on keeping yeah. that Oof. and. Uh, I can barely sing anymore. <laughs> and I used to sing soprano in yeah. our choir. That's a high. That's yep. high. I used yeah. to sing soprano when I was younger. Um, I had a very broad range as a young person, though, so I, I could cover any of it. But I, I do feel more comfortable being being down in the altos now. My yeah. voice, I can definitely tell that my voice has <laughs> dropped as I've aged. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird how that yeah. happens. Mm-hmm. Um, how many performances do you do per year, like in public, like not just sitting at home or in <laughs> practice? So the symphony will have two performances, or the symphonic choir will have two performances with the symphony this year. And then for the first time I don't know if it's the first time ever, but it would be the first time in a very long time. You can claim whatever gonna, you want on this We're going to have a standalone concert oh. this fall oh. where we will be performing without the symphony and we are doing all acapella pieces. <gasps> oh, oh, I, I just got chills all over too. my body. I know, oh, it that's is. exciting. That's going to be awesome. So we've yeah. already started practicing some of those pieces too so that we're really polished yeah. um, come time. Oh, that, that's cool. do you have for that. do you have to wear the choir gowns? Yes, we have okay. these beautiful long black gowns. Oh, um, that was fun for me getting my gown. Yeah, you know, in December, and you have to keep good care of it. Yes, you have to turn it in after the end of the performance. No, it's mine. It's mine. I own that. So oh. we own oh, our nice. we own our um, gowns, and they probably won't change anytime soon. So that's good. It's not like something I have to continue to invest in. Yeah. So there's a lot of music opportunity in Great Falls when it comes to like mainstream bands or singing of that kind of thing. Completely different kind of music. Mm -hmm. Did you ever consider like being the lead singer for (laughs) 50 Watts on or? You know, I have had that opportunity in my to 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 do lead vocals for 50 Watts. Oh my gosh. (laughs) They oh, are my favorite local band. Um, shout out to Mike Howard. <laughs> um, 
my husband and I, for our 40th birthdays, threw a bash in our backyard and hired them as our band, our house band. (laughs) And uh, we just rocked the neighborhood and had the best time. It's the best time of our lives. But Mike called me up and I got to sing on stage and I got to be a rock star like live out so my dreams fun. of being a oh rock my star gosh. and every now and then I, we'll show up for a performance and he'll call me up and I get to sing on stage oh with the band gosh. and it's a special opportunity because they don't allow anyone else to do that oh and my so, gosh I just you. Michelle I'm in with the band yeah you are they're my dudes wow. you know, we have a good time what do you like to time? sing when you sing with them i sing um hey man nice shot by filter okay or um oh. creep by radiohead oh, wow that's a good one. yeah mm-hmm. typically one of those two songs yeah, yeah. nice a mm. little different than what yeah. you're doing not <laughs> something anyone would expect yeah. coming out of my mouth at all that's fantastic yeah yeah i'm full of surprises yeah that's what i love about guests like, <laughs> i know like, like, like these oh, twists and look turns at this. yeah and I think I'm going down a path, and then it just takes an immediate totally ride. And I'm like, turn. okay, that's fine too. Yeah, we're we'll good. Go that we're going that way. Yeah. Yep. That so works. you've done since you've been in the choir. You've done one concert so far with one them, concert. Correct? Yep. Okay. Okay. How did that? How? What was that How'd like? Go? The first? Yeah. It was nerves for me. Yeah. I was nervous. My knees felt like they were knocking together oh, every yeah. time we stood up. I was like, oh, legs, please hold yeah. me. <laughs> Just so shaky yeah. and afraid. Like, oh, remember all your pauses. Remember mm. when to breathe. Don't be the first one in. Yeah. <laughs> Don't jump the Just going to like yeah. hang back here the first time and check this out. Yeah. Um, by the time we got to our last song, I felt confident I felt Mm. excited and my voice just felt huge the Uh, sing-along portion of the Christmas concert was just which was a one I I was at that it was a wonderful concert super touching this year was really it was a really fun one yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I I felt just beside myself at the end of that first uh, that first performance I just felt like a queen it was so cool it was such a neat experience to be up there with so many truly marvelous musicians, yeah. just living my best life, <laughs> doing, you know, living a dream for yeah. me. It's just, it's cool to be doing this at at my age and after so many years away from from this kind of music. I mean, we're practicing French and oh you gosh. know, learning other languages to to perform some of these pieces, and that is, it's no small undertaking. No. no. So. How many how how many hours do you spend at, at home oh. practicing, and where is your favorite place to practice? I sing everywhere in my okay. house, yeah, in my car, in my house. Yeah, um, I don't spend a lot of time at home practicing the actual pieces, but just keeping my voice fresh mm-hmm. and working on my breathing. Mm-hmm. Breathing mostly for me after being affected by COVID. Yeah, I just, it's no joke. I honestly feel like I went an entire year without my diaphragm mm. even moving because I was just all upper chest breathing. Yeah. Um, and that was just part of the damage to my lungs. I lost 25% of my lung volume oh for gosh. a while. So wow. I had to work on that. Um, this has been a great way for me to work on that discipline. Yeah. So, and it all translates into yoga, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know your other love my yeah. other love yeah. so I folks actually, oh, listening sorry. um you have heard my story about yoga at the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art mm-hmm. in the Lee Steen exhibit <laughs> Michelle is who I did that with yeah and it was the most epic yoga session I'd ever been a part of and yoga was fun and amazing and I'm mad that I still don't do it as much as I did yeah because Michelle's like no you're doing real good remember to breathe like <laughs> yeah. she kept saying remember to breathe I'm it's like such a huge obviously I'm going to keep breathing if not you'll intentional notice intentional breathing yeah <laughs> that mindful piece <laughs> yes. though mm-hmm. yeah it changes so it. it was probably one of the top-notch experiences and and you've also heard guests on our podcast we've had the battle age-old battle of if they like the least seen exhibit or not, I think it's one of the coolest exhibits on planet. Oh Earth. my gosh, yes, yeah. Other people get scared of it. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's, it's not scary. I mean, if it came to life it's, at night, yeah, that oh, it could be scary. But yeah, anyway. But I've spent a fun. night at the museum, and unfortunately, it doesn't. It yeah. didn't happen. There are other things that are <laughs> happen in there, but oh, not yeah. with them. 
Yes. If the ghosts became interested, though, oh, they could really go. mess with you they could. using the, that exhibit. <laughs> so does your talents dive deep into composing or writing music or any Not of that really. interest? Not really. Um, I never have gotten into writing music. Mm. I just like performing it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm. I mean, I, I thought at some point in time I may write some songs based on some of my life journey um you know somebody else would have to compose the actual uh music background music for me yeah. but I, i've i've given that some thought actually mm. pretty recently as to like working on some poetry that mm. may be yeah. cathartic and healing as yeah. well as an opportunity to maybe set it to music at some point yeah one of my favorite pop performers when I was growing up was Jewel. And I think it's because she yes. wrote so much poetry that then she turned into music, mm -hmm. which I think at the time I was so young enough that it influenced the fact that, oh, yeah, that is a lot of what music is. Yeah. It's a sing-songy poetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do mm -hmm. have a deep appreciation for Jewel mm -hmm. and all artists who do write and perform their own music yeah it's I just think that's a level of soulfulness that you don't get from performed music that isn't yours yeah i mean mm -hmm. there is still talent there no doubt right there's just something about hearing a lyric that you know like mm -hmm. there's a story there yeah and i want to mm -hmm. know what that is yeah and They're I think rich lyrics. always mm -hmm. when you hear lyrics or a song performed, you want to hear from the person who created it. Like, mm -hmm. what's this? Tell us more about because you're getting this small three minute glimpse of what is clearly a 10 hour podcast yeah. episode, you know, <laughs> of why this was created. Mm -hmm. But I think it kind of sinks that music a little deeper into your soul when you know a little bit more of that background as to how it was created or where the story came from for that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as humans, it's our natural desire to want to connect with mm -hmm. other humans. And so those things are, are reasons and ways for us to connect with one another. And that's why we love that so much. You know, mm -hmm. we just, we want that connection to that oh, artist. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. why are they telling me this story? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to know more. <laughs> and some of them are stingy. They hold it back. Yeah. And they're like, they it's won't really unpack for, the secrets there. It's really mm -hmm. for the person listening to determine what the meaning is for yeah. them. And like yeah. interpreting like, oh, a piece of art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to learn. <laughs> like, just <laughs> tell just me who tell that song's me. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the story mm -hmm. behind that? Yeah. It is fun to speculate, though. Yeah. You know, it is fun to... to imagine you know mm -hmm. what what that story could really be about or mm -hmm. how deep it runs you know yeah. some of the pieces that the choir performs are lengthy mm -hmm. very lengthy multiple songs movements and stories yeah, yeah that is just a whole other level of <laughs> practice and talent and for the audience too it's this whole journey through these different movements of the music absolutely yeah and just like knowing when to celebrate that's mm. one thing that i um i can't help but notice you know when you are in the audience at a symphony or a a performance of that caliber um clapping in between movements is you know it's not forbidden but <laughs> yeah it is frowned upon yeah you know and just knowing like when to hold your celebration yeah. and when to let it rip is mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole etiquette thing that comes along right. with being in the audience at, yeah. at these performances and that's that's kind of fun too yeah i think that's what's nice about uh maestro harville uh he does mm -hmm. that preview so you know what to expect when you're going yeah it, that is nice like yes. this is, we're not done <laughs> I've, Hold off. Things I've are been still at somewhere. Coming. I was like, oh, people didn't listen. Like, it's not the end of the song. It's just the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't clap right now. Yeah. I went to my daughter. She's 13, an eighth grader at East Middle School. And um, she had a performance with her viola. The uh, music in our school's performances took place last week. And so they had the citywide choir orchestra and band um, concerts that the eighth graders got to play with their other eighth graders at the other middle school. So mm. North Middle School and East um, played a com two combined pieces. And then 
Ooh. the chamber orchestras from both CMR and um, Great Falls High performed as well. And I just couldn't help but notice and kind of cringe a little bit in one of the pieces that the chamber played. They had multiple movements and they had not led the audience um, prior to that to let them know, you know, pause. You know, if you don't see that baton drop, that's still an active piece of music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good, so that's a good, cue. yeah. Okay, somebody comes and watches the performance. How do they know when is a movement change and when is a conclusion and time to clap? So if the conductor still has their baton mm -hmm. in their hand, that piece of music is still active. That okay. is still a live piece of music. They will stop and turn around, and that's your cue. <laughs> and that's, like, oh, yeah. that's okay. really a great yeah. cue. When you see the conductor's face, like, yeah, mm -hmm. the music's over. <laughs> Time's <laughs> Yep, yep. <laughs> So with your kind of a little bit more intimate knowledge about the symphony, the symphonic choir, I've been backstage and I've watched the symphony practice. They could practice the same piece. I think I've been to four practices. It sounds the same. Like I'm not picking up on the little issues. And here mm -hmm. I am at, at, at practice with my humor. That was what my <laughs> role was for. And Maestro Harville is like, I need da, 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 da. And you're doing <laughs> da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure da, da. So. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure there's no change, whatever yeah. you think is happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. So can you pick up on some of that? Like, so when you're listening to my Cheryl Harville go, this is not the way. Or if Cindy's going, hey, you did this. I'm like, mm, I, I don't think. I don't hear it. <laughs> yeah. It takes a refined ear to get to that point where you can pick up on those subtle um, nuances and those changes in tempo, um, the length of the note, the how much power you put behind it. Mm -hmm. Um it takes time and you develop an ear and you've either got it or you don't. I mean, there are people that just <laughs> clearly can, I don't you can never yeah. teach that to mm -hmm. them. It's just not in their programming. They don't have the skill yeah. or whatever it takes to get there. Um, that's something I feel grateful. I was able to develop at a young age. Yeah. Well, or you could just be blissfully unaware like me if you're sitting in the audience. <laughs> yes, going. and you just enjoy the enjoy the performance. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's easier for people that <laughs> don't sit and critique yeah. to be able to enjoy it that way. Yeah. Yeah. After practice I went to uh Maestro Harville and it's like you know, you're pretty, you're pretty hard on these people. And I'm going to tell you, the audience <laughs> is probably not going to notice whatever issue you had. But some and, people will. Yeah. And uh -huh. they will appreciate those. Uh -huh. little dot, 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 dot. Yeah. And I'm sure the, his response was, you're a moron. Uh -huh. You know nothing. Actually, he didn't, would never say it that way. No, but that but is that kind of the luck. Look like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So when you're looking uh, at the choir from the audience... How are things split up as far as oh. where soprano one, soprano two, alto one, alto two, tenor, bass, all that? So, Real so I was, question. let's see, <laughs> facing the audience, I was on the far left. I actually was the last person on the aisle mm. um, or on my row, right on the aisle mm -hmm. for my very first performance. I was like, oh, you're going to tuck me <laughs> in the middle <laughs> somewhere? Right? Let me hide. And then you're responsible for like exiting or exactly. whatever. Yeah. Leading a whole aisle of people out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just start walking and you're in the middle of a performance. Like, oh, like, oh I didn't know I was still active. <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we were done. Yeah. <laughs> oh so we are set up um, from with the altos on the left, sopranos all the way over on the right. And then the oh. men are split in the middle. Okay. And are you alto one and two next to each other? We are kind of scattered in there i mean we're grouped but it there's no like hard division okay. line between us so is that a normal symphonic choir setup because not that my school was right or wrong <laughs> um uh, girls boys oh yeah i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know why they set it up that way um if it's just it sounds better that's yeah it looks better to group it that way. I, I really don't have any all, clue. Are you grouped the same way for this upcoming performance as well? Yep. Or do you scatter ever? We practice the okay. same way. Um, I'm assuming that our setup will look the same on the stage. We yeah. only actually have one piece for this next 
performance with the men. Okay. And then the ladies have a standalone piece that they will oh. do. And we, Ooh. this is going to be a really fun piece. Um, we won't be on stage. <gasps> oh. That's all I'm going to say. Ooh. <laughs> intriguing. Yeah. And this is on April what? <laughs> April 29th. <laughs> okay. Saturday, April 29th. <gasps> I'm intrigued. Yeah. Because I've been in this theater, people. There's no like hidden stage well there's no <laughs> what do they call that the band pit oh the pit yeah. mm-hmm. there isn't one of those there Mm-mm. yeah and i have not seen underneath the stage not that it doesn't mm. exist like maybe there's a boom you will yeah. hear beautiful ethereal voices ascending on you as if from the heavens Ooh. oh it will be <laughs> otherworldly so oh. let me nerd out it a little ties bit ties right in with the theme of the show which is the planets so oh, that's right Perfect. yes yeah. that does awesome. make sense our voices will just be kind of floating in space which it's gonna be really neat <gasps> yeah I'm excited so i am a huge cirque du soleil fan mm. i love cirque du soleil not just for the physical performance and the acrobatics of it but all of the music is live and I think that's what screws people up if it's if they ever go to their first Cirque p- performance. You don't see the music. You don't see who's singing. You got to look. Mm-hmm. And they're like in the rafters. They're hidden behind <laughs> some cages. Like, But they're there. The, the musicians, the voices. And it's not music. It's not... So it's not a song it's mm-hmm. music and it's people doing crazy things with their mouths and it's oh, oh, oh. And i'm like <laughs> where's that coming from yeah. and then you see it's a human being making all these <laughs> sounds and i'm like oh this is funner <laughs> yeah so it's cool it's gonna be like that yeah. near as i can tell during Ooh. the planet's performance yes something just like that you're gonna have to search <laughs> and find them all throughout this the is building exciting yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Oh, speaking of Cirque du Soleil, <laughs> that just took me right back to my first, my first and ever uh, experience with Cirque du Soleil. I saw O at the Bellagio. Oh, that's one I haven't seen yet. We went oh, to Oh my Ka. goodness. I can't wait to go back for another one. I've only been to Vegas a couple times. Um, didn't get the opportunity to see a show last time I was there, but uh, yeah. it's on my radar. If mm-hmm. and I would have never gone to a Cirque performance, but we were at a national conference for my old job, and there was one being performed. And my colleagues like, "Hey, do you want to go do this Cirque show?" And I'd never heard of it. But my immediate response to most anything, probably not something I should share on the podcast, is <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Off, let's make it happen. And so we went, and I was just enthralled. I'm mm-hmm. like, this is epic it's the modern day if you want to run off to the circus that's the one you join because that <laughs> is a respected position yes yes no kidding the amount of talent that it exists and so now i just make people go with me all the time like i'll find one within a, a driving distance from great falls i'm like i'm going mm. so sorry yeah. for that detour no, no i've not <laughs> been to one i would love to see one. i just yeah. love to be witness to the amazing things that people can do with their yeah. bodies yeah talented mm-hmm. and the like amount these of bodies are just <laughs> yeah remarkable <laughs> really are. the amount mm-hmm. of discipline and practice it takes to get to that level and you just mm-hmm. sit there enthralled with what they've been able to do mm-hmm. with determination and discipline i just i think it's amazing yeah, yeah. and Much creativity like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Um, so you have uh, the standalone performance, and then does that end your season? Yeah, that will end our season. Actually, technically, I believe this concert will end our season, and, and then, then we will, I'm assuming we will have some practices over the summer. We won't just jump back in in the fall and pick these up after <laughs> Yeah, you want to continue that. And like, <laughs> All right, we got yeah. this acapella performance here in a <laughs> Let's week. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah we're not going to do that to mm. ourselves. Um, so I'm assuming that there will be some practices um, in between. Um, and then our season will start up again in the fall. Mm-hmm. Do you have to try back out? Yeah, no. it's like, do you get kicked <laughs> off? Like, Thank is God. it you're only no. on for a season or two? I or? don't have to re-audition, which is lovely. Thank <laughs> goodness I never have to go through that again. Oh, yeah. Um, and I do believe... When I auditioned, I believe Cindy told me that we were at 85 
ish members mm. and she would love to see our choir swell to a hundred. And wow. so we do have space. Yeah. Oh, Ladies so there'll be gentlemen. more, more mm. options. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of people. It is. And I love that's that big voice yeah. sound. I hope mm-hmm. we get there. Mm-hmm. We'd love to be in a 200 person choir. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's just oh. thrilling to be in that experience, hearing those voices come together and mm-hmm. make harmony and, Oof, yeah. Dissonance and, mm. you know, you have those uncomfortable moments yeah. and then it resolves. Oh. And it's just, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Do you guys ever go to competitions as a oh. group? So I have heard that in the past there have been like traveling excursions like okay. across seas and, oh my gosh, you know, cool. There have huh. been performances elsewhere. Yeah. And so, um, I wasn't around when that happened. <laughs> so I'm hoping it happens yeah. again in the future. That would be very That'd cool. That'd be neat. Mm hmm. I'd would love to take to this like show Austria on the road or something. Yeah, that'd be it so would be cool. cool to go to like a throw, coral throwdown, <laughs> like a oh, like on pitch like perfect. Take your acapella to pitch perfect type no, of like, thing. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> full choir, like that's not a thing. Movie's been made of yet. Yeah, not. A and full you get to see the <laughs> seedy backdrop of people trying to sabotage a choral performance. Oh, and yeah, yeah. How would you do that? Well, it'd be almost <laughs> like a competitive all-state music mm-hmm. program. Yep. That That's would be kind of epic. what I was thinking, too. Yeah. Was like the closest thing I've ever come to that would be like an all-state mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. festival. Yeah. That is pretty fun. They mm-hmm. are. If you're a music geek like <laughs> yeah. me. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we were... It, it wasn't really... You didn't select into band or choir. You were just in band and choir like that, which I... I'm grateful for because, you too. know, when you leave school, you don't realize other people weren't forced into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some people in, To it. go into life with mm. some musical training, it's just a special, it's like a secret language, mm-hmm. you know? It's just cool. Mm-hmm. I think it is. Okay. It is. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's easier to learn when you're younger and you can pick it back oh, up. Gosh, yeah, that neuroplasticity when, it, yeah. when in our youth is mm-hmm. a dream to learn new skills. Yeah. But you're never too old to learn something no. new. No. Mm-mm. Never too old. Just There's always time. You're mm-hmm. still breathing. Yeah. Keep Are you teaching yoga still? So right now at the moment, I'm working with private clients. I actually... At Around the same time that I took on this adventure to join the symphonic choir, I also enrolled myself in continuing education, and I am back in school now to become a yoga therapist. Oh, wow. So I'm taking my 500 hours and just going deeper. Mm. So what is... I want to really specialize in helping people uh, with mental health issues. Mm. Is that where... my heart. Is that the difference then between yoga instructor and yoga therapy or therapist Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. so it's going to be about a thousand more hours of training wow um where we dive a lot deeper into being trauma informed Mm. and communicating with with people in a different way Mm. wow that's going to be pretty fun yeah i think so yeah fun's probably not the right (laughs) word but it's fun for me um it's fulfilling and it's I feel it's just my calling. Mm. Yeah, so, I would agree. Yeah, After mm. COVID, it was, um, I don't know, it was time for me to go back to the drawing board. It was just like... A reset. It was a mm. reset for sure. I, cl- I had to walk away from my studio at the time. I just couldn't keep it open and pay rent and not have students in there while we were closed down. And then by the time we were able to open back up, I was working full time and it was so difficult to try and transition out of working full time to open back up Mm. and things happened. So here we are. I decided to go back to school instead. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I think that's just a really good piece of information, Mm -hmm. Eh, not information, piece of advice. Like you can always go reset. You can mm-hmm. always go back and just go, hey, let's take a little breather. Let's take a break. Make sure this is still the path I want to be on. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When life throws monkey wrench at you, you just got to <laughs> figure out what to do with what it. What to do with that <laughs> wrench. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. true. Mm-hmm. There's a quote by C.S. Lewis that my mom 
loves that's along those lines of like you're never I don't I won't get it exact but you're never too old to to dream another dream basically absolutely and that like you can always pursue new passions and education and try something different and this whole concept of the age being restrictive I mean obviously there there are things yeah that happen but but to still pursue something no matter what age you are if it's something you're passionate about or to not give up on on dreaming or pursuing new things yeah Yeah. I remember the day that I auditioned and made the choir I called my grandmother on the way home and she's going to be 100 years old oh in June gosh. and oh my gosh. still sings. Wow. Um, she's just she's just a bird. She's oh. a little bird. But I called her to tell her that I had made the choir as a grown up. And that it just, <laughs> you know, she knows it had been a long time since I'd been in a choir or sang on that level. And it was so fun to just share that yeah. conversation with her and just mm-hmm. feel those that generational tug mm-hmm. like that I'm carrying Carry- the torch you yeah know? that's my so daughter cool. also has an incredibly beautiful voice mm-hmm. and so I've been encouraging her to sing a lot yeah. use your voice yeah so don't let that light dim I'm mm-hmm. hoping someday maybe she also will be standing next to me in symphonic cool. choir yeah. and how cool would that be that would yeah. be really cool so we don't have a huge opera scene here in Great Falls <laughs> and we- by huge opera scene I mean basically not any yeah <laughs> So being that your grandma used her opera voice, that's a whole different style of singing. Mm -hmm. Have you been to an opera? Mm -hmm. Is that something that um, we can look forward to you and Cindy crafting some (laughs) fun excitement around like doing a whole opera on stage at Mansfield? Oh, gosh. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be really fun. That would be amazing. That would be cool. There are some talented voices in our choir, I tell you. That could happen. Yeah, we used to have an opera house in Great Falls. Oh, and it was it's one of the historic buildings that didn't stick around, which makes me really sad. Yeah, I think they talk about it at the History Museum. You can learn more about it at the History Museum. But I remember Jason and I hearing about that once. It's like, oh, we used to have an opera house. That's so cool. I don't know but just by name or what, but well, we used to be such a musical and entertainment capital in a heyday, and we still have that, but. But I also yeah. think opera used to be more mainstream yes. than it is now. Mm-hmm. Like it's harder to find uh, operatic performances, no matter where you live. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, that could just be my opinion. And if you want to correct me, feel free. <laughs> uh, you can always email us at information at visitfalls <laughs> really? and tell me how wrong I am. Like, yeah, but it's <laughs> not really the first time it's going to happen, and it won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> completely comfortable yeah. with that but yeah. I just don't see that happening as often as mm-hmm. like Broadway musicals or uh, symphonic choirs or community choirs or those type of things just don't see that as yeah. much yeah mm-hmm. well, that's very true could be one of those things like um, just go by the wayside mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I try to use my opera voice as much as I can with my uh, with my performance pieces here and I love that we perform the kind of music that that is just really like appropriate for. Yeah, so, yeah. We don't really do popular pieces or any pop music. It's mm-hmm. the it's classic, classic choir music, challenging yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I love it. That's cool. So I would re I would be remiss because I'm sure everyone who's listening is just screaming at the whatever you scream at because it's not a radio. <laughs> your phone. phone. Yeah, probably your phone. Are you going to sing for us on the podcast? Oh. I mean, not to just put you completely on the spot, <laughs> but you have been practicing some acapella pieces. Oh, boy. I don't, you don't know have to. any <laughs> of that music well <laughs> enough to perform it for you today. It's okay to say no. But I, I just, would um, tell you that um, come visit us in the fall and hear them live yes. because, my goodness, it's going to be a treat. Do you... It's okay if you don't. Do you know when... I in do the fall, not the yet. Performances? That's all okay. we've been told right now is that it's going to be it's in the fall. Happen. In the fall. Okay. Okay. So come for the April 29th performance. And then come stay back tuned. in the fall. Yes. Come back in the fall. Um, yes. Come back for December stay all for summer. the Christmas yeah. concert again. Oh yes. my goodness. What a time to come and enjoy the symphony. I always love the, the Christmas. It's like a yearly tradition for my mom and grandma and I. Mm-hmm. So you get to do that. Um, people are really hip to our Christmas stroll. Mm-hmm. So you can also plan to be, you can do Christmas really well in Great you Falls. Can. Oh gosh, yep. yes. Especially that first part of December. Mm-hmm. A lot a of lot. fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the parade of lights, the stroll. Mm-hmm. 
the shop the small. Yeah. Shop small. Yeah, we've got a lot of fun going on around mm-hmm. here in December. And maybe just maybe some impromptu street performances. You just never know. <laughs> you never know <laughs> what will happen. It's you true. know, when I worked down at the block um, slinging sandwiches and beer, <laughs> my counter people got a daily concert and they loved it. <gasps> oh, how just, could you not? Yeah. yeah no I kidding. was giving a free concert here yesterday. Not good. <laughs> and there's a reason it was free. Like most people, if they had walked by, they'd been like, "Ooh, wrong area of the building." So oh, no. was I here for that? I no. just didn't hear. Okay, <laughs> was it no. morning? No, I was you like, would've, you would've "I was like, did I just done. not hear that?" Happening? No, you would have noticed that. Okay, <laughs> don't do it when there's a lot of people here. Okay. But anybody yeah. that uh, that's ever worked with me knows that I sing. Yeah, they get to be part of those those free concerts. <laughs> hey, let it's it very let generous it of you. Yeah. I, I Bless enjoyed your it. co-workers yeah. with your gift. <laughs> It'll usually be a modern rap, and then it just sounds weird. <laughs> and they'll be like, better. <laughs> what is going on in the office over there? <laughs> can you rap? I can rap. Oh, of course you can. I told you, I of love. Of course you all, can. <laughs> I love all genres of music. That's fantastic. Yes. And I, you know, I grew up in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. So of course the, you we can. We had the best rap and hip hop yes. back then. <laughs> Vanilla Ice, Eminem. Oh. Ice Cube. Mm, yeah. So have you ever done Dancing with the Stars? Do you do dancing? I, Shannon's done Dancing with the Stars. I actually won Dancing with the Stars. I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> I won awards, but not the whole <laughs> shebang. Yeah. I had the greatest experience doing Dancing with the Stars. Um, I really hope I get to do that again some at some I point in my life. I hope they bring that life. back at some yeah, point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really liked that Miss Linda brought it back with a live band for one year. <gasps> oh, that's right. That was really neat. Yeah. Um, I think it's just one that there's a lot that goes into that mm. with the choreography and practice, the and... practice time. And like, it's a yeah. lot to, it is a lot to pull together mm-hmm. for one person. And so yeah. someone is going to need to take that on as a team. Mm hmm. And fund it well mm-hmm. so that everyone gets paid for their time. Those instructors put in a lot, yes. a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's maybe where it runs into some hiccups is that it tugs on certain people a little Too more much. than it. Yeah, a little more than it should. And it, if we did it right, it could just be like, oh, yeah, tremendous. Who is your partner? My partner was Riley Griffin. Okay. And my instructor, my dance instructor was Chris Constantino. Oh, and, yeah. Um, they live out in Seattle now. Mm-hmm. So I don't get to see them anymore, but um, I still follow them on Instagram and all yeah. their fun, fun dance adventures. But boy, what a dance he choreo- chore- choreographed for <laughs> us. I was like, ooh, what's that word? Yeah. <laughs> I'll figure mm-hmm. it out. Just stumble mm-hmm. through it. It was fun, though. I, I got to incorporate a lot of my yoga Mm-hmm. Oh. abilities into that, that piece modern. of movement a yeah. lot it was very much more modern and incorporated a lot of a lot of that deep stretching mm. drawn out movement yeah. um and riley being able to base and with the strength that he had was yeah. able to just move with me we had so much fun doing yeah. that it was truly truly a gift we had my studio to practice in at the time and oh, so it's nice yeah we were up there a lot yeah we polished a lot so that's what it takes to be a winner kids in. yes mm-hmm. sir got that yep. mirror ball trophy to yeah. show for it yep. <laughs> that's what it takes mm-hmm. what was the award you won well, well, i've done it twice <laughs> That's a good award, Ruth. No, uh, the first time Andy Farron and I were partners and did it, and we got um, Broadway Bound Award. Oh. And then when Gordon Johnson and I were partners, we got Best Costume and People's Choice. Yeah, there mm-hmm. we go. Yeah, yes. don't scoff at my awards. <laughs> I like the People Choice Award because it like gives yeah. you it's some. Like, oh, people are, people at least enjoyed watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. people gives... that paid for the tickets. You're right. Yeah. They got... Exactly. Almost means more than someone who's professional and knows what to look for. You know, <laughs> those type of... <laughs> yeah. you know if I was giving out awards the at the symphony, <laughs> be a lot of people getting awards. Yeah. <laughs> and Grant would be like, uh, uh, no, and you that's you not get appropriate. An award. <laughs> you get an award. <laughs> and Grant's oh, just going to like throw those in the trash. You were awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, he's lovely. <laughs> we do get to rehearse. Um, Grant comes and leads our rehearsals every two, three weeks or so mm-hmm. throughout the season to just kind of touch in with where we're at and give us practice notes and things like that mm. so he, you are he's actually your conductor too like you're Absolutely. not you mm-hmm. don't have a separate one like behind the sim or behind the symphony that's no no Cin- cindy sings with us oh. during performance okay. and so she is part of the choir um but she also <laughs> wow. i believe she also yeah. leads the community choir if i'm not wrong hmm. i hope i'm correct on that Cool. Anyway, yeah. you can email Rebecca if I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Yes. We just say whatever we want. Yes. It's not your first time to this podcast, people. You know. Mm. I was going to share my grandma um, for Christmas. She would kind of expressed interest. And I this was something I didn't really know she was interested in. But she kind of expressed interest in singing. We got her a gift certificate to go take vocal lessons, and she's been taking <gasps> lessons with Cindy, and she yeah. loves, oh. yeah, she loves Cindy, she and I'm so wonderful. proud of her. It was so, it was so cute. After her first lesson, she called me, and she sang to me over the phone, oh. which was just adorable. I just got goosebumps. I know, and she was so excited. So just talking about these dreams and pursuing things and working with Cindy, like I've just been so proud of my grandma for doing that and she loves it yes i think i think she had mentioned something about maybe they were going to try to do some type some something where she could potentially perform in some capacity i think she's trying to do like at karaoke's like oh you know make my other favorite way to perform by the way yeah but but i'm so proud of her and it's been it's so fun and like that memory will stick in my head of her calling me after that first lesson and singing to me it was just that is a precious 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 moment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's what it's all Mm -hmm. about yeah. So much artistry in Great Falls. There really is. So it's mm-hmm. kind of fun. We lots are a very talented community. Mm-hmm. Lots of different forms of art, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If you think you want to see it in Great Falls, we'll make it happen. That's my <laughs> promise to you. Opera, right around the corner. Coming right up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of my dreams, which um, may come to fruition sooner rather than later, is a summer theater program. Yeah, And I'm going to go visit with the uh, ladies who are spearheading the Great Falls Theater Company to go, yeah. hey, what's it going to take? And then we have Act Normal Theater Company that's doing a lot of that live performance with the play that goes wrong. Yeah. They're going to be opening Murder that. Mystery. And mm-hmm. um, Tianta does a great job there. So there's just a lot of avenues to mm-hmm. look at the performing arts as a whole and get indoctrinated at it indoctrinated to it <laughs> here in our community yeah. and what better way to spend your time whether you're a resident or a visitor just to mm-hmm. sit back and enjoy performances yeah i did see that the great falls theater company um i know amber who is president oh, yeah. of the board with that she i saw i think they're going to be having auditions to do oklahoma yep for this summer like in july um, i think is when they were aiming to have the performance which would be exciting that's a musical it oh, is a musical mm-hmm. that's all i know that's all you got kids <laughs> i saw that's that one got, once yeah. as a kid Oklahoma. i don't remember very much of it no it's a fun one though yeah, yeah. and then the act normal theater the those murder mystery i think most of the weekends in april you can get in yeah. on that so i really want to check that one out i do too yeah. it sounds fun i just feel we talked about it earlier this morning that we're going to figure out how to make it a team activity and we're just going to go and make mm-hmm. it happen because all of us have said, oh, it'd be so much fun to yeah. go. And then we never do. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, That's always us, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'll be fun. That looks fun. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Shoot. Why didn't we do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What could we have possibly been doing that was <laughs> Sitting better in front of than the TV. this? <laughs> Being lazy. <laughs> so, folks, when you are ready to come uh, to Great Falls... We have the trail systems, we have the museums, we have the state parks, we have everything you want to do outdoors. But think of adding in or making the commitment for a specific event. Obviously, we got one coming up in April that forces you to get here because it's only going to happen at that time. And what could be more fun than going to this uh, performance where you have to find the people that are singing? Yeah, that sounds really fun. It's going to be mm-hmm. great. Where are they hidden? <laughs> are they find Michelle? That's your from. <laughs> are we hanging from the rafters? Yes. Oh. Are they behind you? <laughs> 
creeping Are they going to pop you? up underneath? <laughs> from, Crawling on the floor? Who knows? Mm-hmm. But that then, you can make that point happen, mm-hmm. and then you can do the trail system. You can yeah. do the shopping downtown. You can do Sluice Boxes State Park. You can go to Giant Springs State Park. Yeah. You can do whatever you want, mm-hmm. really. But you can base it around this event. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a great way to spend some time. Mm-hmm. I might do it myself. You should. <laughs> a little staycation, Rebecca. Yes. Uh-huh. Get some stuff done and have some fun. Yeah. And if you need help planning any of your trips, you want more ideas, you want me to plan your entire five days of being in Great Falls, I'll do Are that. Are you going to offer that? Yeah. Wow. I'll even be your spectator at golf. <laughs> <laughs> spectator for rent. <laughs> Listen to that episode from last week. Yes. Yeah. Um, so folks, get here, have fun, um, plenty of space to roam and run around and have great adventures and see this amazing community and get to meet some of our residents. Mm-hmm. They're fine people and they're nice. And if you find them on the trail or you see them at the pub, go ahead and talk to them. They'll be they'll be super sweet to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll tell you how cool our community is. They better. <laughs> <laughs> they don't send them our way. <laughs> And all of our information is at visitgreatfallsmontana.org. I already told you the email address, so rewind if you need to listen to that again. And then phone number, 406-761-4436. And I always want to say, I think we're the only podcast with a phone number. I know that's not true, but I'm saying it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) The only one that announces the phone number as if someone's listening, waiting to write it down. I know. I'm surprised you didn't repeat it a second time. Yeah. You went through that pretty fast. Go slow. Yeah. Hey, I told you before we got started, the questions we've had at the office today, uh, yeah. one person looking for a TV and one person looking for a CD changer and a uh-huh. phone book. Like, these are things that we deal with. So today is 90s day here? Yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah. waiting for the next guest to ask for a VCR. Yeah. <laughs> where can you buy one of those and I'll be like I'm going to send you the same place I sent you the, the other, other people things. for the TV and the CD changer mm-hmm. I don't uh, know where <laughs> else just send everybody down to the home and garden there show you there you go, go. that's probably the where they all are <laughs> come see us at the home and garden <laughs> that's show that's true actually yeah. see what we can Good get point. you set up with <laughs> so folks um, I hope you've had a blast I have completely enjoyed learning mm-hmm. more about the symphonic choir something I know very little about and I think it's really cool that you yeah took the leap you're in the choir they can't kick you out which i think is even cooler <laughs> but i think getting in's the tough part yeah for sure staying's the easy part yes, um definitely. so folks until we see your bright smiling happy healthy wonderful faces here in our beautiful community i hope you cr- are creating amazing memories with your friends and family wherever you might be. We'll see you soon. We're No Damn Experts is the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town.